making a king size fur blanket made from two fox one full length mink one fox patchwork jacket and three mink stoles here it's finished but just to give you an idea of how big it is it takes up almost my whole living room here's the fox jacket it's a patchwork so it's made up of multiple pieces of fur and some of them were quite damaged so this is the back side of the fur here's the white full-length main coat it was really lovely silver mink stole which was very delicate to work with as you can see it's already has some tears in it and stoles always seem to be harder to work with here is a dark brown full-length fox coat as you can see the fur is just beautiful here's the full-length silver fox coat this one made me sneeze a lot Here is the brown, uh, brown mink stole, and I have two of these to work with. Let's take it all apart and then put it all back together again. So the project that I'm working on is a very large project. It's going to be a king size blanket for the bed. It is going to be made up of multiple furs, three full length fur coats, three stoles, and one jacket. Now I have two different foxes for the full length and one white mink for the full length. Two mink stoles are actually three of the mink stoles in different colors and one rabbit. These uh, furs were provided by the customer. So the customer went around to her family members and asked them all for their old fur coats because she lives in an area that's very, very cold and she wanted something to keep her super warm at night. And uh, she contacted me and I said, okay, let's see what we can do. So from a full fur coat, what I will do is I will take my 12 and a half inch ruler that I have right here, and I will cut 12 and a half inch strips, but not all the strips are going to be the same length. So once I cut a strip, my main strip is always the longest piece, and I do that from the center of the back and this one is 49 inches it's going to be my longest piece but it's not going to be enough so I'm going to have to combine it with an additional piece of fur so the 49 inches isn't going to be enough so after I make all the strips I write down the length of each so the first one was 49 the second one was 38. The next one was 38. Now you always use a piece of painter's tape. You could actually write on the fur. I choose not to. I just use a little piece of painter's tape because I'm going to pull that off uh, later on when the project is made. But you could see that there's all kinds of writing on here, but I prefer not to do that. So the next one is 38.5. And these smaller pieces came from the sleeve. They're 16. And this one is 16.25. So how do I know that I'm going to get enough?
Well, this is kind of like my schematic. I know it doesn't look great the way it is, but what I did was I photographed each one of the furs and I put it into a program. Now, obviously this is not how it's going to look and I'm not making blocks, I'm making strips. But this gives me a good idea of how big I want my center piece to be. So it's going to be 84 by 84. I'm going to have two strips of the same fur and one strip that's going to be a different color. Originally, we were hoping that we could do three strips of white, but we don't have enough of the fox. So uh, I'm going to use a different fur, a lighter one for the center piece. But like I said, not all the pieces are exactly 84 inches. So the way I figure it out, because I have 84 as the center, and I always use my calculator because I don't want to screw it up because you cut it and then you're in trouble if you don't have enough. So it's 84 is my center block. And I'm going to start with the largest piece that I have, which is 49. So I'm going to subtract 84 from 49. And that's going to give me 35. So that's the next piece that I need. 35 inches. But all my pieces are 38. If I use the 216s, it would be too small. So I'm going to have some leftover. So 38 minus 35 is 3. So I'm going to have an additional 3 inches of fur that I might be able to use in my next strip. So I'm going to cross out the 49 and the 38, and I'm going to add all the rest together. 38.5 plus the 16 plus the 16.25, and that's going to give me 70.75. Well, my strip has to be 84 minus the 70. It's actually 84 minus 70.75, and that's going to give me 13.25. So I could do one of two things. I can make another strip from the scraps or the leftover fur that was cut to measure out 13.25. Or I can just cut one that's 10 inches and add my additional three. But I don't really think I want to do that because I, the less seams for me, the better, right? So what I've done here is I've taken all the additional straight pieces that I had. Let me pull this back a little bit. These are the straight pieces that I had originally. And I'm going to add that to the bottom of one of my strips. I'm going to bring it to the machine and I'm going to sew these seams together. And when I built it, I actually built it on my ruler. So I know that it's going to be, when I laid it out, uh, it's going to be 12 and a half inches wide, a little bit wider than that. And it's going to extend beyond the 12 and a half. So there'll be plenty of fur for an additional piece. So instead of having five horizontal seams on the strip, I'll have four horizontal seams on the strip. Uh, I think less is better. Here I'm taking those strips and I'm lining them up on my template like I stated prior so I know exactly how large that piece will be when I go to sew it together. This is what I use for my sharp container. 
this is where I put all my used razor blades and needles and rotary blades and all kinds of things. It, all it is is a used gum container and I put a tiny little hole on the top and when I'm at my sewing machine if I need to change my needle I just drop the used needles right through the hole so I don't have to open it. But if I have larger pieces uh, like rotary blades or the uh, blades that I use with the farrier's knife, I just pop them in there. And you can see that there are tons in there. And when this is completely full, I'm going to discard it in a sharps container um, so no one gets hurt because everything in here is pointy, sharp, and can cut you. I'm going to take cold tape and I'm going to put it along the edge of my long strips and trim off any excess. This is what it's going to look like hopefully when it's laid out, trying to get an idea of color. I threw it on the bed. Mine's a full size bed and it has to be king size so it wasn't quite the right size. Here everything is clipped together with the border and I use the fur machine to sew it all together. Once the blanket top is complete, I'm going to layer it with a light cotton, which is pinned and then tacked before the final step, which would be to sew on the backing. Come visit us at DynastQuilts.com.